Hey. <laughs> How are it's you? Working. It's working. Anyway. Okay. Wow. Let's wait for everybody to come back and join us. So, so what we'll do um, is that if maybe other people are not able to join in, um, after this, please save it so that it can be in our stories. Okay, perfect then. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm glad this is finally happening. Dave, thank I'm you so much. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. <laughs> How are you? Thank you I'm very much. I'm, I'm unlike you in an not in an office. Oh yeah, yeah. How's that going? So you guys don't have classes now. We have classes. Fortunately, we can work electronically. Much of our like lectures are streamed, yes. so lectures do go on. Except students should not come to campus. So the lecturer stands in the yes. lecture theater, yes. delivers a lecture on a live stream, so the students just ask questions from oh, their homes. That that's really great. So guys, I'm just going to briefly introduce Dave. Um oh my gosh, where do I start? <laughs> so Dave is a senior lecturer. Um he's been lecturing for quite some time now and he's a qualified chartered accountant and what I like is that he didn't do his articles in order because most of the times you guys always ask about what about the people who are not doing articles in order. But today we're not going to talk about that. And the other exciting thing is that Dave also marks ITC. So it's nice because he's lecturing and he also knows what is expected on the IEC, ITC side. So, so yeah, so yeah, that is Dave. Do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that is good. That's good. <laughs> and guys, you can go on his LinkedIn, follow him on LinkedIn and maybe ask more questions on LinkedIn. So yeah, so except I'm not like LinkedIn. really, really active. I'm not, I'm, I'm not active a lot on LinkedIn, but <laughs> yeah, I will engage with you guys there. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So let's start with um, what we here for today, um, yes. because I've been receiving so many messages. People are struggling with CTA, and I thought they will be the best person to actually answer the questions because he's dealing with the CTA students every time. He sets exams for CTA students. He lectures. Everything that has to do with CTA students, like I said, he also marks ITC. So let's hear his perspective because what I realized when I was lecturing is that um, the lecturer's perspective is usually so different from the student's perspective. Absolutely. Sometimes you just like, you know, you think things are straightforward, but then students sometimes they tend to complicate stuff. So let's hear. So um, I have my questions here. So I have my questions here, and we can start with, there's a question from Pilo, where she said, how do I tackle CTA on first attempt? So, Dave? Okay, guys, um, CTA is overwhelming. Tremendously, tremendously overwhelming. But I found the students that actually fare well are the students who work consistently. But now it's so easy for you to find yourself burning out, having burnt out not even halfway through the year, simply mm -hmm. because of the workload and everything that needs to be done and trying to keep up with, with the workload. But the trick to getting through CTA is understanding that you are in the business of ironing things out. Mm -hmm. Technically, CTA is demanding because it's a lot of work that is quite demanding on the brain and having to wrap yourself around transactions. And the most, the one thing that makes it most challenging is because many people do it without having had exposure to actual real life transactions. So much of the time you're having to imagine what a transaction is like for you to actually carry out the accounting for arguments. And by the way, I'm going to be responding from the perspective of Finac because if this is amazing. Yes, I know. <laughs> I love um, now, how do you actually tackle it every week? Guys, I don't know. Many universities have a TUT system where you go to lectures, you've got TUTs for the week, attend TUTs, and thereafter have your briefing sessions. That's just generally how universities do it. And that, for me, is the best approach to it, where you set aside time to, number one, go to lectures. And even if you go into lectures, make sure you are there deliberately. Yeah. Be there wanting to get as much out of a lecture as possible. You're, of course, never going to walk out having absorbed everything that the lecturer is. 
but make sure that you are sitting in a lecture absorbing enough to get you working on tutorials. Mm -hmm. And when you do your tuts, guys, make sure you do your tuts under exam conditions. Yes. Number one, the tuts need to be done. They have to be done. I mean, how else do you demonstrate the fact that you understand a principle? And how I used to approach CTA was I would do my tuts under exam pressure. I was not concerned with finishing or completing a tut. Yes. I was concerned with getting through a tut finishing it, giving it my best, of course, with what I think I know, which half the time was little. <laughs> <laughs> and then marking myself. The learning is in the marking, you guys. Mm. You can only get through CTA if you realize that the marking is where the learning is at. And in your marking, mark yourself honestly. Yeah. Be happy to get 20% out of a tut. You know, That's get 20% out of and be happy with that because then you are able to identify your areas of development. And what do we mean by that? What I mean is if you've gotten 20% in a TUT, it means you are lacking 80% of the knowledge that the TUT was examining. Yes. Which means you need to then go and say, okay, this is what the solution is saying. This is the solution I have produced. Where have I gone wrong? That's where you now reconcile your responses to the questions mm -hmm. to the solution itself. And in you doing that, you're not just saying, okay, I got a million rand and the solution says it's 800,000. Mm. You need to say, why did I get to a million? And why is the solution saying 800,000? That difference of the 200,000 is a principle. Mm. Convert that into a principle to say, I got to a million because I did A, B, C, and D. Mm. The solution got to 800,000 because it did A, B, and C. Yeah. Therefore, the principle I'm missing is this principle. And guess what you do with that principle? You bank it. Bank it. Have a principles bank. Bank it. Jot it down to say, this is a principle that was tested in this tut. I did not understand it because when the question asked me to do this, this is what I did. Yes. And uh, that's that, this is something you do with every single one of your tuts. Not just some tuts. Every single one of your tuts. Tax, auditing, manfin, finac. You do it with all your tuts. And that is you producing quality work. Quality work is not you getting 80 out of 100 for a tutorial. Quality work is you walking away from having done a tutorial and marked it, feeling like, actually, I, I have learned what I did not know. Mm. No, definitely. Not. So, definitely. That's, that's how you get there. And, and guys, here's another thing. Um, and perhaps I'm jumping. And some no, of these... That's all right. That's all right on the questions that will come up later on, perhaps. Yeah. But you need to also, in you trying to get through CTA, you need to build relationships. Mm -hmm. You need to build relationships with other students. You need to build relationships with other people who are working as hard as you'd like to work. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by this? What I mean by that is, in you building relationships with, with lecturers, you need to consult. Mm -hmm. You are never going to understand everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. I've had students come and sit with me and they will come telling me, you know, I'm so frustrated. I'm not getting this. I have sat with this so many times. I've, I've covered so many questions on this topic. And half the time, I'm just like, let's talk about what you know. What is it that you know, mm -hmm. the specific topic? Because mm -hmm. that's where you identify the knowledge gaps. Yeah. And in my discussion, I will say one thing, one, one, literally one sentence. And it'll unlock what they didn't understand in all five scenarios that they covered. Please. So the value is value in consulting. Do not, do not allow yourselves to drown without That's reaching struggling, out. Struggling alone, just because oh. you have that pride. You know, other people think I went through um, third year. I have a degree. So if I ask a stupid question, what will people think? And it, CTA is a different ball game. CTA is. is a different ball game. And half the time, what you're struggling with is what everyone else is struggling. with. Definitely, definitely. So just to summarize, guys, those were great points. I hope you've been taking notes just like I've been. Uh, firstly, Dave said consistency. Consistency, consistency, consistency. It's not going to work if you just push everything and then towards the exam you try to do everything. It's just not going to work. So that is the first thing. I like the second thing that he said about aiming the, 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 the information that you already have. Because Remember, CTA is unlike first year. You already have some foundation. 
So mm-hmm. I really do think as you go along, don't think you have to like start from the beginning, from the beginning when it comes to everything. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to say something on that? Many students want to fall into that trap of actually going back to everything that they did in undergrad. And guys, the fact that you have a degree means you know something. Let's be honest. It means you know something. So there is absolutely no need for you to, at CTA level, go back to say, okay, IAS 16 PPE. What is depreciation? What is a depreciable amount? No. You are just at a point where you, in CTA, are dealing more with integrating all of these standards along with tax and whatever other modules that they may be interconnected with. And to touch back on consistencies, Anela, please mm-hmm. can I stop with? Yes. Consistent working is not you living in the library every day and then feeling like, okay, I've done so much because I spent six hours outside of lecture time. Mm-hmm. I spent six hours in the library. At the end of the day, it's about what you produce, the quality of the work that you produce. And again, the quality of the work you produce will be demonstrated by how much of what you do not know you bring yourself to know it. And you will never, guys, you will never, ever know how much you do not know if you do not do your tutorials and mark yourself honestly. Definitely. That's, that's, that's true because I know I, I used to be guilty of that, especially in undergrad, where I would study the whole day, but doing something that I'm already good at. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I've been working. I woke up at 2 a.m. studying, but I was doing something that I'm comfortable with and it was giving me that reassurance that, so. okay, I can, you know, I'm Security. doing something. But that's not adding any value. That's not improving the quality of your work. So that's a great, great point. I mean, Zanele, if you think about it, if, if I was to ask you what your name is today, what would the answer be? It, Zanele. And if I asked you the same question a year later, what would the answer be? It's still Zanele. So you do what you know you know and nobody can take away from you. And why what should I wake know? up at 3 a.m. to study my name? <laughs> So what you need to focus on is that which you do not know. Yes, yes. No, definitely. And the point where you know it. And again, that's where the relationships come in. If you're stuck on something, guys, email a lecturer, even if it's at 11 at yes. night. Yes. And I, keep, I encourage my students to, to sit with their frustrations no longer than two attempts. If you've done something once and you are struggling with it and you do it again and you hit the same block yes have email on the spot even if it's not like an email or just have a word document that is running where mm-hmm. you are writing down what you're struggling with and express yes. yourself clearly. express yourself clearly in what you're writing down to say i have tried this touch so many times i keep getting to this answer this is how i am processing my thinking is this way and send mm-hmm. that to a lecturer mm-hmm. because if you, wait, if you decide i'll email the lecturer in the morning guess what in the morning you're going to wake up and you're not going to feel as in the woods as you did about this topic and working on it. And what are the chances of you working it out? And and that way that works both ways. Just like you said, you need a principal a bank a principal bank. So having those two things, having the the place where you record all your frustrations and having a place where you record everything that you also got right after learning through through a tutorial. So so definitely that's a great point. And the other point you made that I really think um, was very good was that you're working with something that you're imagining. Like you haven't had any any contact with all of these. So that's actually a stumbling block. And I saw this when I started my articles because everything else just started to make sense. Makes like sense. When you're studying, you expect, it's like you think it'll just come to you. Mm-hmm. So it won't just come to you. You have to obviously put certain things in place so that you can get to a point where you really understand what all of this is about. So that was a, that was a great uh, point. And the other one is that, because I know I also struggled with this, you say that when you're putting in the time and you go to the lectures, be intentional. Because I know I got, whenever I was, whenever I felt like I was swamped, I had so much work, I would go to the lectures, but I would feel like, why am I coming here Pointless. because I still have three topics that I haven't done. So I'd be so frustrated. I'd be sitting there, you know, like checking my phone, of which now I'm wasting the time. Like I'm wasting time for, time that, you, for the, like, hmm? time that you could be spending, bringing yourself closer to coverage. Definitely. 
definitely so that was a great point um and i've been saying this one on doing your tutorials under exam conditions because everything is about practice it won't magically appear that in the exam now you know how to do everything mm -hmm. so so that was a great point as well and, and the best one was when you were saying that when you are marking you are actually reconciling what you already know to you know what you meant where you where you meant to go where you are to where you meant to go so definitely keeping your bank of principles is a great one so okay guys and the last one that I'll just touch on is building relationships. Have, you know, the circle that, at, that, oh my gosh, the whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so just having those circles, having friends that also want to pass and they have the timetables, building the relationship with your lecturer because other people feel like the lecturer is going to judge you and be like, oh, you still don't know this. That's not the case. The lecturer is actually there to help you. So let's get to the second one of which I thought this was a good, good question where I think it's Luba who said, what do you do after you get your first test results? Because I also got DMs where people are like, I got my first test results and it's terrible. Should I even continue doing CTA? Is it worth it? So what would be your advice on what people can do when they, after they've gotten their first test results? Now let's talk about why the results of the first test are so, they're always atrocious, let's be honest. They, it's so easy to get demoralized after getting your first test results. But think about it this way. For the first time ever, you have had to write a minimum of four papers in two days. For the first time in your life. First time. So you're writing on a, for argument's sake, you're writing on a Wednesday morning from eight until five, Thursday morning, eight until five. Mm. That is over, that on its own is overwhelming. It's the first time it's happened to you. It's your first test in a whole new degree, a demanding degree. Now, because the learning, learning is a process that is ongoing. Even the results of test one are a learning curve for you. As soon as you get your test one results, you do not, you get your results, you get your script. Do not open your script. You don't open your script. Rewrite that test. Rewrite that test on your own, at your own time. Rewrite it, and then compare the two solutions to each other. Compare your script to what you have prepared after having written the test. You're going to see a great difference in how you have responded in the two tests. You've written one test, you've written it twice, you've responded differently. Can I ask something on that? So when you are rewriting the test, are you still setting the time? Or... You are. Okay. You are. Everything that, you, that you're working on in CTA is time-based. Exactly. Because your exams are time-based, ITC is time-based. Mm -hmm. So you're doing all of these things under exam conditions because it's practice, 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 practice. Yes. You're going to realize that after having done the test again, some of the things you've gotten wrong in the actual test are things that you got wrong, not because you did not know them. Mm. They are things that you got wrong simply because you were under time pressure, you were feeling overwhelmed. And the difference is then, again, when you do your reconciliation, you'll realize, I knew this, but I didn't write it. Why did I not write it? Mm. It's then that you start questioning your thought process, what it is that you think needs to be jotted down in an exam versus what you think shouldn't be jotted down. I mean, with us, we recently also published test one results. And I had a student who was like, I knew, I knew everything in the solution, but I didn't get to writing it. And when I spoke to her and we interrogated what she did, we realized that she is not, the, the, the responses she's, not, she's giving are not aligning with the mark allocation. So some students will struggle with a theory question, for example. Yes, um, yes. Oh, it was one of the questions. So let, let's, let's tackle it now. Um, if, if I could give you a simple example, mm -hmm. if I have to say to you right now, um, we are, you and I are two entities. Mm. And I, you purchase a right from me. Yes. And this right is a right maybe to get exclusive use to a building. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask you for five marks. Is this right and has it or not? Some students, and I, I, I scope it down to say, in terms of the revised conceptual framework, yes. is this right and asset or not? Mm. 
-hmm. certain students will just be succinct. I mean, it's five marks. So you have to be succinct to the point to say, first of all, for it to be an asset, it needs to meet the definition of an asset. You define mm -hmm. what an asset is, apply, and then conclude on whether it's an asset or not. Mm -hmm. Some students would want to go as far as talking about the qualitative characteristics of a conceptual framework. Mm -hmm. and, and Or you have other students who would first of all want to disprove the liability definition before getting to oh, that. No. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yes. it, it, it's, all of these things are exam technique based mm -hmm. where you look at the time allocated to, to a question, you look at the marks allocated, and then you decide, I am going to punch. Every mm -hmm. sentence I write needs to be a sentence that earns me marks. Definitely, because your marks are linked with the time you have. So Absolutely. if you go overboard, obviously you're taking some time from other questions. And other questions. And it's yeah. the most thing to mark where you realize that a student knows what they're saying but they're not getting to the points that earn their marks and they yeah. run out of time and yeah it's it's it gets quite frustrating when you're marking yeah yeah that's a great one so guys remember when you get your test one results rewrite that test under exam conditions and then after that compare both and try to do the reconciliation if you yeah oh no go for it go for it oh yeah so if you still don't understand anything, book your consultation, email your lecture, and show that you, you just reconcile that and you can move on to the next thing. Yes, Dave? As a nice one, um, in you doing the reconciliation mm -hmm. between the actual, the, the, the actual script and what you did afterwards, all that you're identifying there are your exam technique weaknesses yes. because you'll be identifying that you knew this, but you didn't write it down. Mm -hmm. which means you are lacking in exam technique. And then, of course, you will have other parts that you got or other marks that you missed simply because you did not understand the principles. Mm -hmm. Guess what you then do with those principles that you don't understand? Bank them. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Every week, you need, to be, you need to be packing your principles bank with things weekly. Mm -hmm. Weekly. I had a principles bank for, I remember in CTI, I had a principles bank for... FNAC, one for manic, one for tax, one for auditing. Yes. And a couple of days before you write your exam, guess what you're sitting with? You're not sitting with past papers. You're not sitting with tutorials. You are sitting with your principles back. Yes. And even when you go write ITC, that's what you do. You go back to that because, exactly. yeah, exactly. yeah, that's a great one. So guys, take note, take note. Uh, we've already discussed theory application. So, I know that you're dealing with the with Phoenix, but when it comes to managing the workload, because we have spoken about the fact that CTA, so many things are thrown at you. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to managing your workload in CTA, what would you say is the best approach? First of all, you need to understand that everything links with each other. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do in Phoenix has a tax implication. Yes. So you can always think FINAC and tax at the same time. Mm. And whatever you do in FINAC, in tax, in MANIC, in MANFIN, in, 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 in finance, can always be audited. You can have any of those audited. So while you are busy carrying out the FINAC or the tax or the MANFIN, think of the auditing implications. Mm. That way, that is going to cut on, not to say the amount of time that you spend on auditing, but it's going to cut on you working around understanding what the auditing is trying to achieve. Definitely. So with, with regards to juggling everything, honestly, it's, again, the same process for every module. Mm -hmm. Lecture, attend lectures intentionally. Don't be there for the sake of being there. If you're going to be there for the sake of being there, you'd much rather not be there. Be somewhere where you're going to be productive. Definitely. After having attended lectures, do your tasks, every single one of your tasks. And for certain students, structure works very well. There are students who are like, okay, I know on a Monday I've got tax lectures, Tuesdays I've got auditing, Wednesdays I've got this, Thursday I've got this, and the touch schedule as well will be different modules per day. Some students will then spread their week out that way to say, my week is filled with lectures and tasks up until Thursday. Mm. Friday, Friday, Saturdays, Sundays, I actually have three days where I could be working on my own without having contact sessions. Mm. So then some people will say on the Friday, I'm doing TUTs for the two, two modules TUTs. Saturday, I'm doing two other modules TUTs. And then Sunday, I'm not doing anything. Mm. 
I'm going to rest because rest is also something you need to prioritize in CTA. I know that many people choose not to rest, but it is something you have to prioritize. So some people will sit on Sunday and say, okay, I've done all my tuts for the week. Mm-hmm. Let me just go over there. I've marked my tuts. The seen tuts I have marked, all I'm concerned with are the unseen tuts in each module. Mm-hmm. Let me go over them and look at what it is that I've done just to bring myself again to the thought process behind yes. how I got to my answers. And you get into another week. And that, that's honestly what you do every week. Week every, on week. Yeah. So the key is actually planning because um, actually let's go to the first point that you made. You said everything links. And I know for most varsities, what they do is that maybe if they're dealing with a certain standard, on text, they're dealing with almost the same thing on yeah. audits. So for most varsities, it's already like that. So if you're able to interlink it as you're studying it, it makes everything a lot easier. It does. So that was the first one. And your second point, because people ask me this all the time, when you said, ensure that you do all the tasks, people say, we don't have the time to do all the tasks. And other people will definitely say, Test one didn't go well and I didn't do all the tasks. Do you think I should go back and do all of those tasks from January? What do you <laughs> What do you think about that? Look, everyone, to be quite honest, we all don't have time for for much of every demand that we have placed on our lives. You make the time, guys. Honestly mm-hmm. speaking, you make the time. You you registered for CTA knowing that it, 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 it's demanding. So you have to make the time. You have to find the time. If it means you survive on four hours of sleep every night, then so be it. And yeah. just like to yourself, I'm going to work around the clock and Sundays I do nothing. Yes, yes. yes I rest, yes. you know, recharging. Yeah. Just find a way that works for you. And another thing that we students tend to not hone into is your... body clock some people are most productive mm-hmm. what works for you. find find time in the day in the 24 hours that you have find a time that works best for you because there are certain people who will choose to work six hours in and often knowing very well that if they to try and produce the amount of work that they're producing in the six hours at night, it will take them half the time. So why not do it there Definitely. when you're most productive? So it's, it's all of those, with managing your time, it's finding a cycle that works for you. Of course, taking into account the fact that many people, the majority of us work during the day. Yes. So you'll have to also consider what it means for you in terms of what you do during the day versus what you do at night. Definitely, definitely. Because I remember I used to sleep sleep at six o'clock when I was at varsity. When I was doing my CTA, I'd go for my classes, do everything. And at six o'clock I sleep and in the AM so I can be able to wake up and it was nice and quiet. So guys, please find what works for you. For you. Um so we're just gonna discuss the last question now. So since people are isolated and they are working from home they are streaming lectures um, they just want to know How can they study at home? Because I know, for example, when I was at VIRTS, I, I used to, like, home is well, so I was at VIRTS. So during the holidays, when, um, when our rest was closed, I had to study at home. So many mm-hmm. other people are now at home, yes, yet they used to study at the library at school. So it can be challenging because maybe there are yeah. kids at home. There are mm. so many things at home going on. So what are, what are the tips of like getting around all of this? Because it can be different and challenging as well. Do you know, um, 
it's quite challenging. Because environment is different now. Like instead of having or existing in a controlled environment, you're now going into a space that is very flexible and that is more prone to interruptions. <laughs> um, I think this touches again on your body clock. Yes. Picking your times very well, deciding when what is going to be done. And also, this is where these relationships that we spoke about come into play again. Mm -hmm. Keeping an ear on the ground by contacting other students um, who you know are also working wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And also keeping in touch with lecturers to, to just, just touching base. To say, can I book a consult with you two days from now? Perhaps book an hour with a lecturer. That too will force you to make the time two days before then to actually do work so that when you eventually meet with the lecturer for a consult, you have a bank of questions to ask them. The learning should not stop. Bottom line is the learning should not stop. And each of us will have to make it work with whatever we've got. Mm -hmm. so, Definitely. If you like myself, I, I work on power naps. Um, I can work, sleep 30 minutes, get up, work some more. If you like that, that is what you're then supposed to do. The process break your sleep into fractions to keep you working consistently. Other people like yourself will choose, okay, I'm going to do whatever I need to do during the day, sleep mm -hmm. at six, get up at 10 or 11 o'clock mm -hmm. whenever and work throughout the night. Just guys, find what works for you, but do not stop working. And yeah. find whatever will push you. If you have WhatsApp groups with, with other students mm -hmm. where you guys are discussing each other's progress, join those WhatsApp groups, work with other people. If you have resources, have, have this live videos where you are having actual tutorials as a group of students. Pick a time with the people that you're in class with, tackle tutorials together, discuss what you're struggling with, and if you guys are still struggling, pick one of you guys to, to be the person driving what it is that you're struggling with and presenting it to the lecturer and then coming back to give you guys feedback. Definitely. There are quite a number of ways. To work definitely, definitely. I like how you gave us so many options because it's easy for people to just make excuses at such a time. Like there'll be so many excuses. And that's not going to justify anything because at the end of the year, you'll be writing your exam, hopefully. Even if you're not writing it this year, eventually you'll write your exam. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Hmm? And I mean, it's a lot of money that you guys are spending on CTA. CTA costs a lot of money across the board. Yeah. And the amount of time that you're spending, if we were to monetize the amount of time that you spend, we would actually easily walk into the millions. So right. think of that. Think of that. Think of that and let that be what pushes you. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna recap on the key points, and then yeah. we'll end this. I'm very, very excited about this. I really do feel like you have gave, you have given practical steps. You've given really, really good tips. So I'm just gonna um, just wrap up on the ones that I have here, guys. Remember consistency. Remember your principal bank, being intentional about attending your classes, reconciling your knowledge, being able to link all the four subjects. Um, after getting your test one results, don't be discouraged. Do everything that we spoke about. And then when you're studying at home, self-awareness, your body clock, and using your relationships at all.
times. So guys, that's it from us. Dave, do you have anything to add just before we leave? Yes, yes. Yeah. One, one, one thing that we did not cover. Yes. How we tackle theory and application questions. Yes, yes. Can we yes, talk about that just quickly? Yes. Um, I've had many students say, look, I don't know how to tackle theory questions versus application questions. And guys, if you think about it, the reason why a CTA is called a certificate in the theory of accountancy is because everything is theory. Everything. Even what we call application is actually theory. Mm -hmm. A classic example is this. If I come to you and I say, um, we, are, we are, for example, an entity. We have purchased a motor vehicle. We paid 300,000 Rand for this motor vehicle. It's going to be used in the business for our day-to-day -day operations. How would you recognize that motor vehicle? Mm. you would first of all say, naturally, you'd say, okay, it's a motor vehicle, it's PPE, um, it cost us 300,000, debit PPE, credit bank. What have you done there? You have applied something, and that's something yes. that is theory. Yes. You have first yes. of all applied the definition of what PPE is. You have also gone as far as saying, what makes up the cost of an item of PPE? And the standard specifically tells you the mm. purchase price, less any um, recoverable taxes, and any directly attributable cost to bring that asset to a location and condition as intended by management. By you saying this mm -hmm. item is worth 300,000, you have essentially applied the cost, the theory around what the cost of PPE is. So there is no difference between theory and application. Mm -hmm. Even when you're debiting your debits versus your credits, you deciding that an expense will get a section 11A allowance, you mm -hmm. deciding that something has to be net of that or inclusive of that. You are actually, in, 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 in essence, applying theory. Definitely. Now, some students struggle with answering theory questions versus application questions. And guys, the formula is one and the same. Mm. IPAC, IPAC. Yes, yes, yes. IPAC. The first thing you need to do is say, what is the issue? Mm. What is the, that's the I, what is the issue? Mm. You're given a transaction, the entity purchased a motor vehicle. You're told to recognize it. What's the issue? The issue is the recognition. How do I recognize it? Before you recognize it, before you tackle the issue part of it, you need to say, what are the principles? That's where the P comes in. I issue P, principle. The principles will come from either legislation or the efforts. You look at what the principles say. The principles will tell you definitions. What is PPE? What is intangible? What are intangible assets? What what constitutes investment properties, what qualifies for Section 11A, what qualifies for whatever the legislation is saying. Then what you'll do is say application. So you've moved from I, the issue, you've gone to P, the principles that come from the textbook. You then say application. Application would be you saying, if this is what the principles in the literature say, mm -hmm. this is what the scenario is telling me, let me merge the two. That and is I think that's the part that students don't like. They exactly. just want to dump whatever they already know from tutorials. They want to leave the scenario that they presented was at that point. No, don't theory dump. Go okay. to the principle, look at what is in the scenario, merge the two, and that's you applying it. And then ultimately conclude. Conclude to say this is what is this and how is it going to be recognized. And if this was an application style question, you would have said the issue is there is an item that has been purchased. This item is a vehicle. Principle, does it meet the definition of PPE? If it does, apply the definition of PPE to this purchase. Mm -hmm. Conclude that it is PPE and then measure it at the cost. What constitutes the cost? Purchase price and all those directly attributable costs. Mm -hmm. Then what you do, your conclusion is a debit to PPE, a credit to the bank account. That's the conclusion. Definitely. So Definitely. application and theory are one and the same thing because they both stem from the same, the same source. Yes. Ah, that's a yep. good one. That's a good one. So guys, remember your IPEC because I've seen that other students just want to leave the IPEC in first year. They feel like when they're dealing with so many standards now, we just chuck it out. It's not no. about that. It, it's still like you just, because even when you get to the workplace, that's what's going to happen. If a client asks you about a certain thing, you have to understand the issue and the principles that you already have. 
end the time mm. scenario and you have to conclude you ca- you can't just email the client and leave it like that without concluding and giving them a solution so so uh, this has been great dave i'm and getting excited say- and i'm having one other thing can i share one last thing i promise yeah, you this is the last thing um another thing i've i've realized in 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 lecturing and marketing is students do not read guys accounting students do not read and by read i mean what do you do in the reading time versus what do you do in the required lands so with with a 3 hour paper you will be given 30 minutes of reading time mm. i keep telling my students this that that 30 minutes of reading time is not you trying to figure out what the question is going to ask because you get the required at the end of the reading time. Yes. So what you're supposed to do in the reading time, the reading time is there to familiarize you with the scenario. Mm-hmm. It's not there for you to nitpick and try and preempt what the required is going to ask because you could sit with a scenario for an entire 30 minutes thinking it's a Lisa's question. And then the required comes and you throw it off completely. Completely. What you need to do in the 30 minutes of reading time is you need to read the scenario a couple of times. So I keep telling my students break the 15 minutes of reading time into 10 minute compartments. For the first 10 minutes you're just reading it. You are just you're literally not writing anything. Mm-hmm. You are just reading the entire scenario page by page, sentence by sentence, going through it all. 10 minutes is enough time guys. In 10 minutes you can easily read through 10 pages of a scenario, especially where we are dealing with finance tax management because in there you have financial statements elements thrown in so when you get a statement you're not going to be doing as much reading as you do when you're given paragraphs mm-hmm. so in the first 10 minutes all you're doing is understanding what the entity is about mm-hmm. understanding the operations of the entity um what transactions they got into just reading then what you do in the second 10 minutes is you then pull your highlighter out you haven't started writing anything guys at this mm-hmm. point you highlight it out and you just highlight things such as dates. Mm. You know that is important. That's important because transactions happen at points in time. So you highlight dates to say okay on this date this happened. Highlight your dates and what I would also do is highlight things such as movements if you are told that a certain interest rate was x amount in a certain year and another year it is now 10% versus 5% last year. Mm. Those movements things that I would highlight those are the things that you want to stand out for yes. because even they relate to specific dates if you think about it an interest rate change will happen at a point in time mm-hmm. on a particular date so when you're looking at your timeline you want to plot these movements in things such as interest rates to particular dates or specific dates rather mm-hmm. that is in the second 10 minutes of your reading time in the third minutes of your reading time you're going to realize that you are reading it a lot faster because the scenario has now become a part of you you have you're now owning it you you now understand it a lot better you're now having the bigger picture because firstly you read it then you got into the date and in the third time you're reading it you're now getting to understand where certain things fit in things such as additional information because there are certain examiners who will set an entire question an entire scenario and at right at the end on the 10th page they will give you additional information to mm. such as interest rates pre-tax interest rates where are you going to know where to plot them if you do not mm-hmm. understand the scenario so in the 30 minutes of reading time you need to have read that scenario about three times yeah and yeah. well at a minimum two times i like that, that because yeah understand the, the scenario solidifies in 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 mm-hmm. in, in your in your mind it solidifies and when you get the required guys you don't jump to writing i keep telling my students don't fall into the temptation of writing when you look around you and you see people writing as soon as the required lands don't those people do not even know what they do because the first 5 to 10 minutes of your writing time needs to be spent reading the required breaking it down dismantling it and by dismantle i mean understand what each comma stands for in the required what each and means understand exactly what the scenario is wanting you to do exactly that way you're going to know how much depth to give in your responses you're going to know what exactly you're going to respond and again because you've read the scenario three times you know where to look for what 
you understand what the required you understand what the required is leading you to in the scenario itself and guys no examiner will ask you something that is not really in the paper the answers every required lie in the required itself and the scenario so if you do not under, you need to understand the required as much as you do the scenario mm. that's the thing that's the thing because students think you want to catch them out and ask them Never. something yeah yeah Never. that's a good one Never. guys let me recap on that do you want to add something before i recap on this because no i think we're done <laughs> <laughs> um guys so just remember when it comes to reading your reading time your reading time they said cuz on in city you have about 30 minutes so for 30 minutes break it down into 3 10 minute compartments and the first one try to understand overall what's happening with the entity i know everyone gets tempted to highlight everything <laughs> where you trying to understand what are we talking about you know what are the transactions that have been discussed and then the second one is where you can pull out your highlighter and highlight your the dates maybe movements in interest rates all those things that you have to remember and then the third one this is when you look at how everything fits in together and if you have additional information this is where you able to see why do we have this in additional information and how does it link with everything mm-hmm. else that i've been reading and i like what he said when he said the moment you get your required that's not the time to start writing because no. uh, what are you writing <laughs> uh, and we get tempted like everyone mm. gets tempted to write and you just see people writing and you thinking oh i'm going to run out of time but what you have to remember is that without a plan your time is going to run out anyway you need a plan so that you can use your time very very well so i like the thing that you said taking about 5 to 10 minutes to link your required to what you have already read about three times so guys those were the golden plan your answers plan your answers don't just don't just write plan think about what it is that you want to put to paper again punch if it's a discussion type question make sure that everything that you write will earn your mark yes yes definitely definitely guys this has been great thank you for joining there've been comments here but i just want to um, there was a question like i can't even remember way oh yeah i can swipe here so miss mopeli said what resourceful material would you suggest to stay up to date with the current affairs so for me i know i used to listen to the money show the money show really mm-hmm. helped me because i felt like i was staying up to date with the current yeah. affairs is there anything else that you can suggest dave i don't know of any other material that you can reach out to unless if you subscribe to particular podcasts yes. that deal with finances on a global as well as a national scale because um I mean examiners get so excited with the things that are happening um around us mm-hmm. pandemics they come up I mean everything has a financial impact mm-hmm. and another thing is there are articles that your audit firms usually publish as soon as something has happened the audit firms will have their technical teams um come together put together a paper one of the papers that I recently read was a paper um published by EY on the impact of coronavirus on financial reporting so as soon as something happens on a global scale that has economic impact think of what the audit firms might come up with and look on their websites find out what what they're saying in terms of and and when you look on their website think tax management financial management auditing finac yes definitely because i also saw a published paper from peter